بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أولم يروا أننا خلقنا لهم مما عملت إلينا عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يأكلون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحسنونك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين إن شاء الله today we're going to be studying ayahs number 71 through 76. Shall I number 71 through 76? Looks like the, the mushroom has been invaded by children. Give them more attention. It's a good Yeah, it's good, right? At least they're here, right? Actually, it's 11.30 at night. It's really good that they're here. So, in I number 71, what we'll be starting here, in the previous passage, we, we actually, yesterday we introduced the final passage of the surah which serves as the conclusion of the surah. And what it basically talked about was, it's, it, it's, I explained how the, the conclusion of the surah, the final passage of the surah is very similar to the introduction, the first passage of the surah. So just as the surah unfolded itself, it is now basically being wrapped up again. So yesterday's two ayat, they talked about the Qur'an and the Prophet Sallallahu They talked about how the Qur'an is not poetry, rather this is a reminder, this is the Qur'an and it's self-evident, it's self-proving and it's clarifying. And secondly, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Allah very, very, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala very powerfully, very, uh, in a very strong tone, Allah said, we did not teach him poetry, and that's not appropriate for him. Rather, the mission, the job, the objective, the role of the messenger is to warn that person who is still somewhat spiritually, internally alive, still has some level of decency left within him. And for other people who do not have that decency still within them, for them it's sort of a completing of the argument against those people and solidifying the evidence against those people. Now, uh, here in this passage, just like in the beginning of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about His great blessings. All the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, all the things Allah has created around this human being, and that He has facilitated for this human being to enjoy, to benefit, to use. How he should look at this, reflect on this, realize that Allah has given him all of this, and as a result of that, become grateful. We talked about gratitude. And the human, becoming, the human being becoming grateful is somewhat of the basis and the crux and the foundation of the message of this surah. That this human being must, he must become grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the same thing we're going to see repeated here. And then finally, it's going to talk about, well, what is the reaction of these people? What they should be doing is becoming grateful to Allah. But when they don't become grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather, what is their reaction? And what will be the conclusion of that? What will be the outcome of the choice that they are making in the life of the hereafter? So let's go ahead and read the ayat now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayah number 71, He says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا Have they not seen? And whenever Allah uses this word, have they not seen? Meaning, haven't they taken into consideration? Haven't they reflected? Haven't they thought about? Haven't they understood? Alright, because seeing just for the sake of seeing, just glancing over something is not the objective. The objective is to see it and then think about it, reflect on it and realize something profound. So that's what Allah is saying, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا Haven't they realized? أَنَّا خَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ That most definitely, Allah says, that most definitely we have created for them. So there's a very interesting sequence, and we're going to see this being repeated, this tone. 
Allah says, we have created. So Allah is obviously attributing this blessing, that this blessing should lead them back to who or to where? To Allah. Because Allah is the one who created this. And He created it for them, lahum, exclusively for them. And the word lam in the Arabic language can also be للمنفعات, for their benefit. That Allah has created it for their benefit, for them to use, for them to enjoy. It's a, faci it's a facility Allah has provided for them, to them. So this is Allah in the middle of this passage where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to remind people. He's reminding these people of their purpose in life, what they need to be committed to, what is the reality of the life of this world, and what is the reality of the hereafter. In the middle of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using a very powerful method of reminding people. And that is not just reminding them of what's important, but reminding them of what's important by means of reminding them of what He's done for them. You know, and this is something that's very natural. This is very psychological. It's just, it's, it's a very natural method of convincing somebody of something. When, when you're, when, when somebody wants you to do something for them, when somebody wants you to show, show you, wants you to show them some level of respect, some level of gratitude, gratefulness, appreciation, and you are not doing so, you're not respecting them, you're not appreciating them, what do they immediately revert to? What do they resort to? They mention all those things they've done for them. Really? You'll disrespect me after everything I did for you? I did this for you and I did that for you and I did... Isn't that always where that argument or that discussion goes? Well, you know what? Because that's a very natural mode of discussing something. And human beings, our minds work in such a way, we, that's how we process information. We need to be reminded of what this person has done for me. And sometimes, you know, you're being disrespectful to someone, or you argued with someone, or you were mean to somebody, and later on somebody tells you, you know, you should talk to him like that. Like, I helped you out. You remember when you were going through your problems, and you, didn't, you needed help, and nobody would help you, and that guy helped you out, and today you look, you're disrespected. And what immediately, what, hit, what hits you like a ton of bricks? You're right. That was bad what I did. And immediately you become remorseful. You're regretful and you go and you apologize. You try to make up for what you've done. Because as human beings, that, that, that makes a difference to us. We need to be reminded of that sometimes. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing here. Awalam yaraw, have they not taken into consideration? Anna khalaqna lahum. That most definitely we created for them, for their benefit. Mimma aminat aidina. From that which our hands have done. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's like a figure of speech, and it's an expression in the Arabic language, in classical Arabic, that from what our hands have made, Allah is saying. Meaning like Allah is trying to show that, look at, look at the lengths to which Allah went to facilitate and to make your life easy for you. He made it with His own hands. Like everything that you enjoy, everything that you, that you benefit from, Allah made it with His own hands for you. It shows care, right? It shows concern. He did it with you. He did it for you himself. And, and what's interesting here is, if you remember in the beginning of the surah, these three ayat that we're studying now, 71 through 73, they are very similar to ayahs number 33 through 35. If you look back at ayah number 33 through 35, you'll see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, ayatu lahum That for them, a, a miraculous sign, a powerful sign, is the dead earth. Ahyinaha, we brought it to life. And we took out from it a seed. A, a, a seed or a grain. And they eat from that. And from there we made for them gardens of grapes uh, and, and date palms. And springs came shooting out of the earth. So that they could eat from his fruits. And they did not make this with their own hands. Why don't they become grateful to Allah? Why don't they realize and become grateful to Allah? So now Allah is kind of read. Allah is that same thing. Allah is mentioning that same thing again but from a different angle. Over there Allah says, look at everything that they enjoy. Human beings. Everything we eat, we enjoy, we benefit from. And we didn't do it with our own hands. We didn't make these things grow and these things happen. We didn't put the ocean and the rivers and the, the trees and the fruits. And we didn't do that with our own hands. It's from the blessing of Allah. Here, rather than saying the human being didn't make it with his own hands, Allah is saying we made it with our hands. So it's like he's showing the, the other side of this. What's the flip side of this argument? That Allah has made this for them. Allah has facilitated this for them. From that which we have made for them with our own hands, Allah says. 
one of those things from amongst the things Allah says that we have made for this human being and we have given to him as a blessing is an'am. An'am basically means livestock. Like four-legged animals, like livestock. This includes camels and uh, cows and cattle, uh, goats and sheep. All these livestock basically. So Allah says we've created all these animals for them. Now why does Allah use this animal, these type of animals as an example? For a very simple reason. Because so many basic human needs and necessities are fulfilled from these animals. And Allah has used these type of animals again and again as an example throughout the Qur'an. Do they not see, don't they look at, don't they go and look at the camel? كيف خلقت how it's been created and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these animals time and time again and even when trying to make the human being realize that how he needs to live up to the standard of being a human being or even over there Allah uses this أُولَئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامْ بَلُمَ that when somebody has eyes but they don't see the truth they have ears but they don't hear the truth they have hearts and minds they don't reflect on the truth what does Allah say? these people are like كَالْأَنْعَامْ they're like livestock, they're like cattle they're like cows but whom I want, rather they're even more lost, they're even more astray. That at least the, that livestock it fulfills its purpose in life. It's a benefit to somebody for something. This human being is not a benefit to anyone. In fact, he harmed himself, probably harms other people as well. <laughs> These people are completely lost. They're, they're, they're just wandering about aimlessly. So this, this is an animal that Allah uses often for an example. And I'll, I'll mention one other ayah later on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these, these livestock, it's from, it's from those things that we have made for them with our own hands. فَهُمْ لَهَا مَالِكُونَ And then those human beings are exclusively in ownership of these animals. I mean they own these animals. Now, so look at the blessing of Allah. He says we created these animals. Allah says we created these animals for this human being. And we gave him full ownership of these animals. He completely owns them. When you buy a cow, when you buy a camel, you buy a goat and a sheep, you own it now. And why is Allah talking about ownership? Because He, he explains this in the next two ayat. In ayah number 72, now Allah begins to explain what's, what, what's the benefit of owning this animal. We have made it completely submissive to Him. This word, dhalalna, it comes from the root of the word dhilla or dhulla. It's the opposite of the word izza. Izza means strength. The ability to dominate something or someone. Strength, power, might. Vulla is the opposite. Vulla means to be helpless. To be humble, to be helpless. To just completely be at somebody or something's mercy. So Allah says we have completely made this animal, these animals, we have put them to the mercy of this human being. You can do with it whatever you want, right? Tie it up, slaughter it, milk it, use it for farming. Tie a cart to it, make it carry a load. You can do whatever you want with it. We made it completely submissive to you. To, to the point where you can completely bend it to your will. You can do with it whatever you like. You made it completely submissive to it. And why is this a blessing? Now somebody might be sitting there thinking, well of course, cows and goats, they're dumb animals. Of course, they're, they're, human beings can use them and do whatever they want with them. But it, it requires reflection. There are lots of creatures of Allah, lots of creation of Allah, lots of animals Allah has created on this earth. But not all of them are as accessible and at our mercy as much as like livestock. There are other animals as well that roam this earth. But not only can we not control them, that we cannot dominate them, they sometimes are even a form of danger to human beings. But these animals Allah has put completely at our mercy. We can do whatever we want with them. And not only that, but all of our needs can be met from these animals as well. How so Allah explains. فَمِنْهَا رَكُوبُهُمْ From them, رَكُوبُهُمْ is their transportation. So from these animals, some of these animals, from livestock, from cows and camels and ox and goats and sheep, and some of these animals serve as transportation for people. And that's self-explanatory. But that's not it. وَمِنْهَا يَأْكُلُونَ And from them, they also eat. And this is also a form of nutrition. A source of food for us that Allah has provided. Abundant food, plentiful food, endless food, endless supply. And not only that, but in the next ayah that Allah mentions more things. And exclusively for human beings, in these animals are manafi'ah. Manafi'ah means benefits. 
And this is a plural. In fact, this is a, a form of the plural, which is like a great plural, a big plural. There are lots and lots and lots of benefits that come from these animals. From the skin, the hide of these animals, the bones of these animals. We use them to carry loads and pull things. And I mean, so many benefits come from these animals. We do so many. They use their, their bodies, and what comes from their bodies is used for so many to meet so many of our needs. Not only that, wa masharib. Subhanallah. Even such a basic human need of the need to drink something, thirst, can also be quenched from these animals, because the female from these animals they give milk. So we even drink from these animals. So now look at these blessings Allah is mentioning. We've made it. Wa dhalla We've made it completely. We've subjected these animals to the human being, put them at the mercy of the human being. So from them is transportation, food, lots of other benefits. As many as you can think of, all, so many ingredients and so many uh, different types of products are made from them. And even we even get milk from these animals, we can even drink from these animals. Now finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so what should be the combination of all of this? Afala yushku. So why don't why aren't they grateful? Why don't they show gratitude? And one thing I told you I would mention another ayah where Allah uses the cow as an as an example, a very beautiful example in the Quran. Allah says, Min baini farth wa dam lebanan khalisan sa'igan nisharibin. That the cow is just in and of itself, this animal is so fascinating. Now, you know this point where Allah mentions Masharib, he, he's even facilitated, provided you something to drink that comes from this animal. What a great blessing that is. Allah tells us another place in the Quran that inside the body of this cow, there is fuck, the waste, dumb, there is blood. But between the both of them, Lebanon Khalisa, pure milk comes out of this animal. He's got waste inside him, the animal has waste in it, and it has blood in it, but between from the both of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides pure milk. Not only just pure milk, but it's very satisfying. It's very nutritious. It's very fulfilling for the people who drink it. So what an amazing blessing of Allah. In just this common average animal, we just say, we, we kind of find it funny. You know, he's just driving, you just see cows, it kind of just, you look at them, makes you laugh. At least for city kids, it makes us laugh. Right? So it's just a dumb animal just standing around, but look at the blessings of Allah. What an enormous, huge blessing of Allah. And subhanAllah, Allah is, this is the conclusion of Surah Yaseen. Allah has talked about Risala, Tawheed, Akhirah, talked about such amazing, huge topics and issues. And He's concluding it, and He wants us to reflect on the blessings that He's given to us for these things that make sense to us. And so what does He present that as, as an example? A cow. Because that's enough. Now think about all the other blessings of Allah we have now. But just one cow is such a huge reminder, such such a profound reminder of the blessings of Allah that we enjoy, that we use, that we don't we take for granted. We don't even realize how much Allah has blessed us. And the scholars they point out, Afala Yeshkurun, this is in the Mudari form, which is the present and future tense form. That why don't they become grateful? Will they never become grateful? It's as if Allah is saying, Will they never become grateful? Because these blessings don't go away once. When you wake up in Suhoof tomorrow morning, you're probably going to drink some milk. Or you'll make some tea and put some milk in your tea. Or you'll eat some cereal. And then the next day again. And then the next day again. And then when you come here for your thought, you're going to put some milk in your tea. It's, you're constantly using these blessings over and over again. So if you didn't realize now, realize maybe in at iftar time, realize the next day at Suhoof, then at iftar, then at Suhoof, realize sometime or another. Allah said you constantly, day in, day out, multiple times a day, you're just using the same one, just this one, blessing of Allah, you're using it over and over again, will they never realize? Will they never ever become grateful? Now, when they don't become grateful, when they don't realize, what choice do they make? What is the outcome of that? Look at, look at how, when a person rejects such a basic, I mean, the, the, what the Quran is presenting, as an argument, is so basic a child could comprehend it. A child could understand it. When somebody rejects such a basic evidence that's right there in his face, that's obvious as the night or the day is, then it's almost as if stupidity manifests itself within that person. 
Stupidity manifests itself within that person. So look at the choice that they make. Ayah number 74, Allah says, What takhadhu min dunillah? What takhadhu min dunillah? They have taken, other than Allah, aside from Allah, alihata. False gods, idols, false deities, false objects of worship, devotion, dedication. Why have they done this? So what they end up doing is, okay, they're obviously they're not grateful to Allah, so then they commit themselves to something. Now, you know, often when we read this, these ayat of this type, this nature, one thing that is often confusing to people is we understand it or we translate it as simply idols. So somebody sitting there might be thinking, you know, I obviously don't worship an idol, so this is not talking about me. But that, it's not that simple. Aliha means any object, any idea, any concept, any person, anything that somebody enslaves themselves to. They devote, they dedicate themselves to, and they give it priority over Allah. And what pleases Allah. And what Allah is asking of them. And what Allah has demanded of them. It could be money, it could be fame, it could be power, it could be the pleasure, or it could be to just impress a certain person or a certain group of people, or an idea, or a notion, or a concept, whatever it is. But Allah is saying that they've taken something else other than Allah, and they've committed, they've dedicated themselves to it. They've devoted their lives to it. And what is the motive? What is the reason behind it? I've explained this before as well, in the Arabic language it means maybe, hopefully, possibly. Because out of the hope, they're hoping that maybe, possibly, hopefully, whom yunsarun, that they will be helped. That this idea, this concept, this person, this notion, this idol, this money, this fame, this power, whatever it is, that this will come to their aid and their rescue. That this will be able to help them when they need help. When they find themselves in a difficult situation. Because remember, they haven't connected themselves to Allah. They chose something else over Allah. So now they're looking to something, they're hoping that whatever they've committed, they've dedicated their life to, will be able to save them, will be able to help them. Well, you know what Allah says, what is the reality? What is the outcome of that choice and that decision they made? Allah says, لا يستطيعون نصرهم. لا يستطيعون نصرهم. Those things that they devoted and dedicated themselves to, whether they be idols or whatever it is, they will not be able to help them. لا يستطيعون. They won't be able to help them in the least bit. They'll be of no benefit, no help to them. They won't have the ability. They won't even have the ability to help them. Let alone be, actual, be of any help to them. They, don't, they won't even have the ability to help them. It won't even be an option for these things to help them. They'll have no ability, no strength, no power. And now it goes to the point, this is, this is a very powerful uh, ayah. Allah SWT says, وَهُمْ لَهُمْ جُنْدٌ مُحْتَرٌ and though they, these idols, for the people who they, or these, these idols or these false gods, these false deities that they committed, they devoted themselves to, they will be present for them, jundun, in the form of an army. And in the Arabic language, when you use the word jund, it of course means an army, but what it really points to is that, you know, if you've ever seen a movie or a documentary, um, and you see like an army lined up. What's the one thing that impresses a person when you see that army lined up? It's the sheer number of people. The row after row after row after row after row. That's what's impressive about an army lined up. It's just the sheer number of people. Alright, that's the implication of using this word joint. There will just be a huge army. Like an endless row of these false gods, these false idols, these, these false deities, these things that they committed and devoted themselves to and they chose over Allah. So these idols will be present, lined up like an army is lined up. For these people, muhbarun, right there, right by them, watching them. They won't be able to help them, but they'll be lined up right by them, watching them. What is this referring to? The mufassirun, they explain that this is talking about when these people are being punished in the hellfire. When these people are put in Jahannam by Allah, remember we read the ayah Hadihi Jahannam Allati Kuntum Tu'adun, Islaw Hal Yawma Bima Kuntum Takfurun. This is the Jahannam that you were promised, that you were warned about. Now enter into it because of the disbelief, the ingratitude you showed to Allah. Alright? So when they're put in the fire of hell and they're being punished in Jahannam, as another form of torment, 
torture, emotional, psychological torture to them, and to show them what a foolish, stupid choice they had made, that they'll be, being, they'll be punished in the fire of hell, and these idols or false gods or these things that they used to worship and commit themselves to, other than Allah, will literally be lined up right by them. They'll be standing right next to them, lined up, watching them being punished. And they won't be able to help them, and these people won't be able to get any help from them. Just picture that. It's very powerful imagery. Picture that. For somebody to be punished, and the person that he thought was going to rescue him, help him, come to his aid, protect him, is standing right next to him, watching him being tor tortured. That probably, imagine the anguish and the pain and the remorse and the regret that that will cause within them. وَهُمْ لَهُمْ جُنُّ مُحْضَرُونَ And it won't just be one person or one idol. It will be an army. مُحْضَرُونَ Standing right there watching over them. Watching them being punished. وَهُمْ لَهُمْ جُنُّ مُحْضَرُونَ فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُ Finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoles the Prophet This is that consolation to the Prophet so this is very, very profound what Allah says. Allah says, فَلَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ So what they say should not cause you any grief. It shouldn't bother you. It shouldn't cause you any grief. لَا يَحْزُنْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ It shouldn't cause you any trouble. إِنَّا نَعْلَمُ Most definitely we know. Allah says we know everything. إِنَّا نَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ That which they do quietly, secretly, what they say about you, what they plot and plan against you. But they connive and they, 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 they create these evil plans against you. <clears throat> and that which they do publicly. When they humiliate you, when they curse you, they slander you, they lie against you, they try to disgrace you in public, we know everything what they're doing. Quietly and openly, privately and publicly. We're keeping tabs on them. It's very powerful. Like when somebody tells you, don't worry about him. I'm keeping my eye on him. What does that mean? I'm keeping tabs on this guy. I'm watching this guy, and I'm going to come get him. I'm going to take a note of everything. I'm going to let this guy dig his own grave. I'm going to let him dig his own grave, and then I'm going to come in after him, and I'm going to get him and then catch him red-handed, smoking gun. That's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here. Don't, don't, don't bother yourself with these people. Just ignore them. Let them do what they're doing. These people have lost it. Look how, look, look at the, look how, look how Allah speaks about them. The foolish choices that they are making. The, 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 just the pure stupidity of the choices that they are making. Allah said, leave these people be. They've lost it now. They're just crazy now. They're like wild beasts and wild animals now. Just leave them be. We're keeping tabs on them. Everything's being recorded. And when we come to get them, then Allah's already mentioned what will happen. They'll be punished. They'll be, they'll be completely helpless. Nobody will come to their aid and rescue. And in fact, those things and those people that they expected to be able to help them and come to their rescue will be standing right next to them, watching them being tortured, but they won't be of any help or any uh, benefit to, them, to these people. So this is the message that Allah provides in this last ayah. And in this message, embedded within this ayah as well, is one other very, very important thing. And that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is honor and distinction being granted to the Prophet Imagine Allah Himself is saying, La Don't let these people bother you. I mean, you're above and beyond. You're better than these people. These people are garbage, they're filth, they're trash. You, إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ You are such an amazing person that Allah praises you in the Qur'an. So don't bother yourself with these people. They're garbage, they're trash. And at the same time, subhanAllah, Allah Himself says, Inna na'lama. Imagine Allah saying, I got everything taken care of. You know, if somebody very powerful, somebody very influential, somebody very rich and wealthy, somebody important says, Oh, I got everything taken care of. I, I'll take care of all the arrangements. Don't worry about anything. You know how special you feel? Hey, he said he's got my back. He, he's taking care of everything. I got a call from him today. He said everything's taken care of. You just feel so special. Like somebody that important is going to this much trouble for me. This is Allah Himself telling the Prophet, I got everything covered. Don't worry, subhanAllah. This is Allah speaking on behalf of the Prophet, making all arrangements for the Prophet. You've done your job. You've gone beyond what was required of you. I've got everything taken care of. Don't trouble yourself with these people anymore. Leave them to me. I'll take care of them. I'll handle them. You just stay committed to the job that you've been sent for. You just keep doing what you're doing. 
You're doing a fantastic and amazing job. You keep doing what you're doing, don't worry about these people, I'll take care of them. This is Allah speaking on behalf of Muhammad Rasulullah. So it shows the honor and the distinction being granted to the Prophet And the last thing I wanted to point out here, in ayah number 71 through 73, if you notice, Allah is speaking Himself in first person. That we created for them. We subjected for uh, these creatures, these animals to the human being. Alright? So Allah is speaking in the first person. Then if you look at ayah number 44, uh, 74 and 75, Allah says, min They have taken other than Allah. Now He's speaking in the third person about Himself. In the first a couple of ayat, He's talking in the first person. Then He's speaking in the third person. Why? This is called iltifat. This is called transition. This is the same thing that a lot of Orientalists Western academics, like I talked about yesterday and the day before, this is that same thing that they point out and they call an error or a mistake or an inconsistency within the Quran. That your Lord Allah is first talking about Himself, and that first He's talking Himself, and then He's talking about Himself. So He's saying, We did this, we did this, we did this. And then He turns around and says, Oh, you, these people have taken other than Allah. So now He's talking about Himself, third person. But there's, there's a reason for this. This is from the literary marvel and the beauty of the Qur'an. There's, there's, there's reasons why this happens, this transition occurs. And it, it's our responsibility, it's of our benefit. It's to our own benefit to realize why this transition occurs and when it occurs. So the reason for this transition, that this transition here is that in the first three ayat, Allah is talking about His blessings upon the human being. So Allah says that in the first person. I gave you this. Like I mentioned earlier. A way to make somebody realize the error of their ways is you tell me I did this for you, this, 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 and you still did this with me? You still treated me like this? So Allah, when He's mentioning His blessings, He does in the first person. Because He's trying to reach out to these people. He's trying to make these people understand and realize. But once they haven't realized, once afalai yashkumun, aren't they ever going to show any gratitude, any gratefulness? What the fadu? Now Allah is talking about the choice that they've made. And they've made the bad choice, they've made the wrong choice. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transitions to third person. It's as if Allah's turned away from them. When somebody's disappointed you, you tried everything you could, you tried 10 different ways to explain this, what was good for that person, and they still don't listen and they still disobey you, what's a sign, what's an expression of showing disappointment with that person or anger with that person? You turn away from them. You don't directly address them. I'm not talking to them. Let him know this. Let him know that I want him to do this. You're not directly addressing them because they've disappointed you. Allah now turns away from them and is speaking to them in the third person. He's not speaking directly to them anymore. So this is from the beauty of these ayat as well. Inshallah, we'll go ahead and stop here. And we should be able to complete this way, inshallah, in the next two to three days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to practice everything that's been said and heard. SubhanAllah, wa bihamdihi, subhanAllah, wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa